Welcome to Artmind. Today we are learning about channels in Photoshop and this is part 1. How do you think this image is produced by the computer screen? Let's keep zooming into the screen until we see lots of boxes filling up the display. These boxes are what we call pixels. Do you want to know how this pixel is displaying its color? Well, it's produced by just three kinds of lights emitted in various intensities. The lights are red, green and blue. But how is this possible? Because when we color something on paper, we mix a bit of red and a bit of yellow to achieve something like this. But these are not the usual colors that we use on papers. These are lights. Red light, green light and the blue light. And lights combine to produce different effects compared to ordinary colors. Let me prove to you that these three lights being emitted in various intensities or brightness are indeed producing this color on the screen. And for that, I'll go inside Photoshop. I've prepared few layers. I've prepared this bluish black background layer which will serve as the wall. On top of that, we have the computer screen. Since the screen at this moment is turned off, it's not emitting any lights, so it's black. Then we have a red circle, on top of that a green circle and last but not the least a blue circle. But seems like I failed to prove my point because the three colors should have combined to produce the effect we were aiming at. The reason it didn't work is because in this simulation the three circles are still colors not light. So in order to convert them into emitting red, green and blue lights I'll have to select the three layers first and from the blending mode select screen. By the way you don't have to worry about screen or blending mode at this moment because I'll make a separate tutorial on them later. Now you might ask now that all the three circles have converted to red, green and blue lights respectively where is the orangish color we were expecting? Well if you remember I didn't talk about lights alone. I talked about the three lights emitted in various intensities or brightness. At this point, the red, green and the blue lights are in their full brightness, a combination of which produces white. So it implies to produce the orangish color we are aiming for, we need a different combination of brightness for the three lights. But how do we virtually alter the brightness of lights inside Photoshop? We do that by adjusting opacity. I know for sure to produce this color, the brightness of the blue light needs to be zero. Or in other words, the screen should not emit any blue lights. So I'll select the blue layer and then bring down its opacity to zero, which corresponds to zero brightness or no intensity of the blue light. At this moment, the three lights combine to produce this yellow color, which is not what we want. To get the color we want, we need to change the opacity or the brightness of the green light to 74%. Now we get the color we were looking for. Let me move the lights a bit so you can see what's happening. I will select the red layer and then move the red light. Select the green layer and then move the green. Select the blue layer and try to move the blue light which you can't see because technically it is off. So 0% blue light, 74% green light and 100% red light combine to produce this color. So these three lights that can be emitted in various intensities to produce different colors are called channels and to be more specific RGB channels red, green and blue. To show you the working principle of the three lights, a 100% blue light combines with a 100% green light to produce cyan, a 100% green light combines with a 100% red light to produce yellow and a 100% red light combines with a 100% blue light to produce magenta. And as you might have noticed, all the three lights in their 100% brightness combine to produce white. For any image, how can you access those channels inside of Photoshop? You will find the channels panel over here. 
So these RGB channels combine to form a composite of this image. I can access the red channel by pressing Ctrl plus 3 on my keyboard, the green channel with Ctrl plus 4, blue with Ctrl plus 5, and for the composite, press Ctrl plus 2. Or you can go individually and click on the I buttons. I'll turn on the blue channel by pressing Ctrl plus 5. And I'll stick the composite image over here. You can see that the sky is predominantly blue. And that is why in the blue channel, this region is heavily lit by the blue light. The rest of the parts in the pyramid and in the deserts do not require much blue light to form the composite color. And that's why they are darker. Let's turn on the green channel. You can see that the clouds over here require more green light than that over here to produce the composite color. Let's turn on the red channel. Here, the pyramids and the clouds require more red light than the sky to produce the composite image. Earlier, we saw that 100% bright red light, 100% bright blue light and 100% bright green light combine to produce white. Let's check that. In the composite, you can see that the sun is white. So in the red channel, the red light must be 100% bright in the sun region and that is exactly the case over here. Let's check the green channel. Here as well, you can see that in the sun region, the green light is 100% bright. Let's go to the blue channel. Here as well, the blue light is 100% bright in the sun region. Some people like to work with a different visual representation of the channels. For that, I'll have to go up to Edit, Preferences, then General. I'll click on Interface and then uncheck Show Channels in Color. The RGB channels are no more showing themselves in their red, green and blue color. Instead, they're showing themselves in various shades of grey. Let me access the blue channel by hitting Ctrl plus 5 on my keyboard. The areas of the blue channel that emit more blue light are brighter than the areas that emit less blue light. For example, the sky region is emitting more blue light, hence that region is almost white. Whereas the pyramid and the desert have grey and dark grey representation depending on how little blue light is emitted in those places. Let's check out the green channel. Here as well, the whiter the area, the more green light is emitted there and the darker the area, less green light is emitted there. It is the same for the red channel. Bright areas with more red light and dark areas with less red light. Lastly, I'm going to create some virtual red, green and blue lights and show you that when emitted in various brightness or intensities, they combine together to form this image. First, I'm going to create a new layer and then name it screen. And then with black as my foreground color, I'll grab my fill bucket and then fill the entire screen layer. Since the screen is not emitting any light at this moment, it is black. Let it first emit the red lights. For that, I need to hide the screen. Then I'm gonna go to my channels. I'll get the red channel by pressing Ctrl plus 3. I'll hold Ctrl and click on its thumbnail. It creates a selection and gathers just the luminance value or the brightness across the entire red channel. I'll turn on the composite by clicking on it. Go back to layers. I'll have to create a new layer for the red light. Then I'm gonna pick absolute red. Next I'm gonna grab my paint bucket tool. Let's hide the image so that you can see how the paint bucket tool fills the red light layer. We'll deselect the selection that gave us brightness information by hitting Ctrl plus D. You can see that the brightness informations translate as opacity. Now we will have to prepare the same for the green and the blue channels with pure green and pure blue color respectively. For the sake of time, I've already prepared them. So here is the green layer and here is the blue layer. 
Since we are done with the red, green and blue, I'll turn on all the layers including the screen layer. Lastly, I need to convert the red, green and blue layers to light. Here you can see the composite image made by the three channels or the three lights. And this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.